Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. And today is Thursday, October 12th. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the terrorist attacks that happened in Israel this past weekend are going to potentially bleed over on other countries, specifically the United States of America. And the reason I say this is not to scare you, but to say that you should be prepared because tomorrow there's a few places you want to avoid, starting with all airports as well as all synagogues or churches. But there are a few places that you'll probably be safe, like your local strip club or police headquarters. So no need to live in fear. Just make sure that you have extra ammunition, a hot dog crucifix. And if you see some funny business happening in your neighborhood, seriously, don't be too worried because they want us to be in fear. And that's why they use the predictive programming of Friday the 13th, the day that's most anonymous with bloodshed and bad karma. But remember, we are America. And just like Toby Keith said, if you mess with us, we'll put a boot in your ass. So if things get freaky, just make sure to watch the show tonight because we're going to go over what protocols you can follow in order to be the most prepared for a random jihadi attack in your city. Things are about to get weird, but just make sure you stay one step ahead by protecting that ass with some heavy artillery. Now let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. And I want to talk about the most pressing thing that is happening in the world today. There's over 340 people watching this stream, but there are only 34 likes. How dare you? If you don't hit that like button, I'm telling you, there's going to be hell to pay. And I'm not talking about Hamas. It's not going to be that bad. But I'm going to come through your computer screen, and I will hit that like button for you. And you don't want that, okay? So hit that button right now so we can get into the show. All right, guys. Now we have an incredible episode for you. But if you don't hit that like button, nobody's ever going to be able to see it in their algorithm. So freaking hit it now. Stab the like button like O.J. Simpson stabbed Nicole. Stab it. All right, now let's get into our show, guys. We welcome on one of the uh, most uh, beautiful and uh, successful at a young age, uh, Trump. What was she technically? What is her job, Jimmy? She worked in the media relations for the Trump White House. One of the youngest media relation employees of Donald Trump's history, the one the only... Stop, Jimmy. Sorry. I'm admiring my mullet. Yeah, it looks like shit. Uh, excuse my French, but Cameron Kinsey. Is that right? Is that her, saying yep, her name? Cameron Kinsey. She has a different name on Instagram. Yeah, so Cameron that's Bailey. Confusing. confusing. That's correct. Okay, well, forget about her for the moment. Let's talk about who we have in studio. He's not only a vet. He's not only the host of the All-American Savage Show. He's also a friend of mine. He runs Shell Shock CBD. He's a real pimp on a blimp. Please welcome on John Burke. How you doing today, good? <laughs> no, I'm doing good, man. Thank you. You doing okay? I appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, but I can't read the freak. Jimmy, why is the monitor? I can't even, what, why did you, I can't like read her name or anything on that monitor, Jimmy. Sorry, I messed up the text. It looked a little, the new font is a little smaller. Jimmy, what, I can't, Jimmy, I'm fucking sick of this freaking, <laughs> Jimmy, I'm sick of this stupid monitor. This monitor sucks, Jimmy. I'm sick. And time of this crap. It's just shit. Oh, fuck. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, oh sorry. No, okay, good, good. Oh, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> oh my god. Jimmy! That's I'm it, I'm suing. I'm suing. Dude, give me some crap that freaking works for once, Jimmy! I mean, how the fuck am I supposed to read this? Oh my god. <laughs> how am I supposed to read this? I'm still having a heart attack from John. <laughs> Don't oh, worry, he signed oh the waiver. God. It doesn't matter. He signed the waiver, didn't he, Jimmy? No, he didn't. No. Why did he not sign the waiver? Beck, I'm coming for everything you got. Which camera? Everything you got. I'm coming for it now. Jimmy, no. these computer chips, they have lead poisoning in them. He could die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's lead. why you signed the waiver. So if the guest dies, we're protected from liability. <sighs> All right, it's now time for an ad read. Oh, okay. Well, I want to tell you about the best wholesale land value in the state of Texas. This is never before seen prime Texas acreage. Saturday, October 21st, in the new section, grand opening of Texas properties at wholesale prices. 
Get a brand new Lake Access Barn Dominium ready for your finishes on six plus acres for only $119,900. Or three 10 acre Lakeview estates priced to sell in one day from only $49,900. But that's limited availability, folks. Don't miss out. On Saturday, October 21st, you can own two plus acres of direct dockable lakefront on Trophy Bass Lake for only $59,900. And that's Minnesota Town for shopping, dining, and their properties are serviced by gated injuries, paved roads, utilities, and high-speed internet to work from home. So do you want that multi-million dollar clubhouse, that equestrian center, and that resort style pool exclusively for owners? Well, then you got to call 765-LAKE-NOW. New section grand opening Saturday, October 21st. Again, you got to go to TXLandDeal.com. Buy directly from the developer and save thousands on October 21st. These properties are wholesale price to sell in one day. Call 765-LAKE-NOW. Again, that's 765-525-3669 or online at TXLandDeal.com. Are you interested in buying a new house or dockable lakefront property? I know a guy really cheap. <laughs> really cheap, John. Oh, that's to me? Yeah. Do you oh, hell no. Something? No, I'm good. You don't want to no. buy any of that $59,000? No, I've, I've looked into that, and I'm, I'm going to remain silent. It's a those wholesale are, those are prime thoughts. real estate deal. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, wholesale, yeah. one day only uh, sale, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't buy it that day, some other guy, some Chinese investor is going to buy it. Bro, if it's too good to be true, chances are it's not it's true. It's impossible. Depth in this scenario, because we love our sponsors. Not we, we love our sponsors, and, yeah. And, and honestly, don't our... ask me about sponsorship stuff, Lou. Don't, 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 I don't want to like get y'all in trouble. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shots fired. But we will get into this. All Chinese businessmen are allowed to buy at this sale. So if you guys want to come here, any Chinamen, you guys want to own some of this Texas land, oh my God. y'all are welcome. And you're going to, oh, and I'm bleeding now. I'm also bleeding from the monitor, but no blood, no foul, right? So if you guys, if you're an Asian businessman and you want to invest your yen in something that is going to only increase in value, I got some dockable lakefront property right for your ass. All right. So John, you served in the armed forces. Let me ask you the toughest question that everybody wants to know the answer to. How do we stop this conflict? Uh, Israel Hamas. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not talking about. It. I'm talking oh. about like, why does the WNBA suck so much, and why is there so much strife? Yeah, that's actually a really good point because they suck and they're boring. Is that why yeah, 100%, though? Yeah, it has nothing to do with the fact the they're New black York... or whatever. But I mean, where's the white representation? Why is there no white representation in the WNBA? That is true. Like, where's the straight yeah, representation? Yeah, and there is no heterosexuals. Yeah, there's no. You know, you have to be a homosexual. <laughs> so there, they are. That's actually one of the most bigoted leagues. Very. Oh, very. Yeah. yeah. Very anti. What would heterosexual? Okay, if there's LGBT, let's create our heterophobic. Own. No, 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 no. Let's create our own real quick. If there's Lesbian, gays, bisexuals, trans. So what would be the heterosexual would be like? Isn't that all just gay? I know. It is all gay. But, I mean, it would be like slut, whores. <laughs> dude, bro. Isn't Brittany Grenier a dude? You, you were there. You I saw know. him. She had a bigger dick than me. But that doesn't, in this day and age, just because you have a penis doesn't make you a man. So I'm not going to sit here and. All those Chinese businessmen are be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Chinese businessmen love black dick. I, I mean, that's not, I don't, is that racist, Jimmy? I, I apologize if that it's came more, off. More of you've a, seen Asian it's porn. We know it's true. Let's stop freaking playing around about this. Come on. So, <laughs> no? <laughs> so we'll get to like the second most pressing conflict in the world, this Israel Hamas crap. But I mean, how do we freaking solve that? Honestly, man, it's it, it's it's one of those things to where I think America needs to stay out of it. And uh, and I know they're an ally. But realistically speaking, Israel actually has the balls how to fight this war. And they're going to fight it the way they need to fight. America lost that in the global war on terrorism. We had our military just crippled by the woke progressive agendas, leaders that wouldn't make the right calls to uncuff the forces. Israel's going to do it the right way. And I feel like there is this, this weird uh, back you, Wait, real quick, I have to tell you, when you say Israel, you think the IDF is going to, the Israeli Defense Forces, they can handle it on their own, you yeah, think? Yeah, 100%. We give them $3 billion, billion annually. I'm not for committing troops. I'm not for sending many more foreign aid. We've done that for years. I mean, billions upon billions given to them. That's what we give them money for, as well as intelligence gathering, things like that. But you can have this really odd position that people don't seem to understand that you can support an ally politically and say, 
it should be weapons free. Do what you need to do to handle this, because honestly, let's let's stop playing around that this is a territorial dispute. This is Islamic terrorism versus Jews. That's what this is. They've said infidels. We, we've seen this in the Middle East for I don't know how long. Yeah, and forever. so people are going to try and conflate these issues and say it's about Palestine, you know, giving up. Hamas has taken over Palestine. You know, they've been in the power since 2006, 2007. They overwhelmingly support Hamas. Now, of course, nobody wants to see Palestinian children killed. And I think that's where this massive conflict's coming in. But what choice, like, let me ask the audience, anybody that has any kind of realistic grasp on what's going on, if somebody comes into your house, murders your family, and the only way you can get involved is to retribute in the same manner, because you can't do door-to-door -door fighting. People don't seem to get the logistics of this. If they enter Gaza without softening the target through artillery and taking out strategic targets, it's a door-to-door -door fight. When you get into a door-to-door -door fight, you're going to take way more casualties, and that's not the goal. Plus, you've got Hezbollah to the north. You've got the eastern border. So Israel's really got to conserve its forces. Then I feel like I'm calling like an NFL thing with John Madden. Well, Brett Favre. No, Brett we Favre, are. Man. We're talking about a board game. Well, bro, basically. yeah, it, from, I fought in Fallujah, places like this. And the door-to-door -door fighting, we saw Ukraine, once Russia started hitting these cities, everything started slowing. And when things start slowing, you give your enemies time to reinforce. So every single person out there saying Israel shouldn't go in there and bombard, but they need to go door-to-door. -door. They're going to take more casualties, thin out their freaking people in those strips. It's just one of these things, like I said, overall, America needs to stay out of it. Let Israel handle it. They can deal with it. And I agree 100%, but that's not the reality of the situation, right? I, I'm a conflict interventionist. I don't want America to get in the Ukraine war, yeah. this war. Yeah. But you know this, the military-industrial complex, the head of that beast is in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So you know that there's a bunch of people right now, oh, yeah. like, they're so excited that we're going to have World War III and World War IV. War is a very lucrative game, man. It's, it makes rich people rich, and the poor people get sent off to die. I saw an article that talked about... Uh, they just saw an ad for the army showing a white guy, and it's like, bro, we're going to war. Yeah, I know, <laughs> we're I going to war. Joke. If they show a white guy in the ad, that it's, means we're, we're going, all to, going war. to war. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then, I mean, I look at guys like Pat Tillman, you know, who's an incredible football player, went and joined the war after 9/11, and then died. Yeah. Um, and I'm just thinking about all the other people that are going to go fight in a war, p potentially either in Ukraine or in the Middle East, and die for what? You know, for somebody else's religious. Uh, for somebody. Well, I mean, the Ukraine thing can be explained for the, under the Obama administration when the coup was set up in 2013, and they installed a pro-Western government that went against the very premise of what the elections were held originally for. They had a, a pro-Russian president. Yeah. So we get our CIA involved, and that's why for the abolishment of CIA, ATF, and get rid of them all. These are the I people too, that are getting... But, but, John, how do we get rid of the CIA? Because it, it, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Even the CIA says that they have more power than the president because the oh, president yeah. changes every four to eight years. Yeah. The CIA never changes. Well, maybe it's time we elect a president that actually makes good on their promises and not appoints Ray to the head of the FBI and starts like whining about the scorpion they played with, turns around and stings them with investigations. So it's like maybe presidents should start making good on their promises to essentially pull these people out, abolish these three-letter agencies, and that's up to the voters. The voters have to demand this. Yeah, but what is it? There's like a Bill Hicks joke, and he talks about how as soon as you become president, they take you in this dark room, and there's all these guys smoking cigarettes, <laughs> and the first thing they show you, John, is a video of JFK. Oh, yeah. Being shot. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And they say, say probably Trump probably went in there, and this is obviously a joke, but I think there's some truth to it. It's like, once you become president, and that's probably why I think Trump got railroaded, because as soon as he became president, they were freaking, you know, impeaching him, you know, mm -hmm. they, were, they were after him. But it's probably because he didn't want to listen 100% to what they said, but he's smart enough to know that he couldn't take him out. Does that make sense? Yes and no. I mean, I think a lot of this is due to voter ignorance. When a president, regardless of which president makes the promises, the thing that should be asked is, how are you going to get this passed through Congress? Yeah. And con congressional elections are far more important than presidential ones, and people just don't care. And that's the problem. Well, we do there. care about AOC, my favorite big booty Latina. <laughs> we do care about some of these congressmen. Yeah. But it's funny you say that, though, too, because what is it? There's 352 or 360 uh, congressmen. And I'm telling you, if you walk around D.C., you only know Dan Crenshaw, AOC, because most of them are just under the radar. You have no idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most people don't even know their congressmen from their district. Well, that's because everything right now is we have a political spectrum that is riddled with Kardashian politicians. You see these people going to these events, shaking hands, signing autographs. And it's just they've turned into celebrities. And last I checked, it's that these elected officials are supposed to represent their voter base. And now it's just going out there and, and you know, trying to get tight with Trump, trying to get tight with these other organizations that represent so-called conservatives in, in order to secure their seats in the future. But in reality, it's the voter base that suffers. And people are getting sick and tired of this. <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not voting for somebody to go out there and get on some Twitter beef with AOC. I don't care about that. I care about I do. where, where I care about that, but go yeah. ahead. I'm one of the voters that loves Twitter beef, but go ahead, sorry. For me, it's just I want to know where they stand on policy. And we've become so entertained with all these political theatrics that we've lost focus on the most important issues that are affecting everyday Americans. I don't care what these people have to say on Twitter. I don't care about dunking on the likes of these morons that are on the left or even on the right for that matter. I just care about these policies being voted for. They're actually America first interest policies. But instead, 
it's going to be, what did Trump say today? What did DeSantis say about it? it, it you know, I, I'm just, I'm burned out. I'm ready for the primaries to be over. I know, this DeSantis-Trump stuff is like yeah. a great middle school bullying yeah. and, and stuff. It's so lame. Hey, hey Alex, I have a quick question for John. Like an mm, actual question. I can't hear you. Hold on. No. Uh, there we go. I can't hear you. Okay, watching. can you hear me now? What, yeah. what, Jimmy? Okay, okay. So God? An int- <laughs> <laughs> no, Jimmy's so, not God. So More something interesting that I've, I've seen some people talk about that I've never thought of. Apparently, Egypt the other neighboring com- uh, country of the Gaza Strip refuses to take in these Palestinian immigrants. People only criticize Israel, but Egypt's right there. They're allegedly yeah. both Muslims. And then Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, Qatar have unlimited funds and won't take them in. So yeah. do you know why? And like, well, like- why hasn't Poland taken in one Muslim refugee? Well, let's let's just be honest about this. this. People Poland don't want to have do people po- don't want to have these this, conversations. Wait, wait, so no, does Poland not take in Muslim no, refugees? No. None, not one. And not one terrorist attack in, in Poland. Really? Well, I guess the difference is, is what work. other countries does Switzerland Muslims. take in Muslims? I believe so. Yeah, I think they do. Mm-hmm. But Poland doesn't. Nope. Wow. And that's what the people want. That's exactly. What, and I'm not saying well, they're right or wrong. Okay, but let's. But it's talk- interesting to sit there and talk about, like you say, Egypt closing their borders. It's political optics. It's political theatrics. Don't say because Egypt even said, "Oh, we warned Israel three days prior to that attack." Israel gets warnings every single day. I can't even tell you how many times in Iraq and Afghanistan we get warnings that Taliban would do this and it would never come to fruition. So you're given like a thousand intelligence reports a day and you got to go through and you got to pick which one has most credibility. So Egypt's out there. They're playing the same game as everybody else. It's political optics. It says, oh, Israel's so bad, but we're not even going to take them in because they know the history of Palestinians. They know the history of the embedment with Hamas. They don't want to deal with that. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Yeah, I know. You know, there's something to be said where now they'll probably clip this, but nationalism is a good thing. I think that's why Japan's country is so safe because it's very hard to immigrate there. And I'm not I'm not even anti-immigration, really, I'm not. Honestly, I'm like, hey, if some of the best tech people from yeah. India and all around the world want to come to America, I, that's okay. Yeah. But it's like the illegal immigration. But there's something to be said on keeping a national identity. Or, and, you know, I think that there is but, something but important to that. It's, it's, it's incredibly hard to differentiate that because what is America's national identity? Well, it's always, they they always said it in school. Well, I gotta say diverse. this, they always said this as a kid. I remember this so much and they'd always now i'm thinking back i'm like i know why they did this because of globalism but they used to always just pound it in our head that america's a melting pot america's a melting pot like i mean through third fourth fifth sixth grade you're always hearing melting pot and i think that that's why because they wanted to create this identity of multiculturalism multiculturalism to an extent but still embracing american values uh which again is outlined in our constitution so when these people come over here and you're bringing in your third world country ideologies and people are just kind of giving a north and south on it, it doesn't work, it's never worked, it's not going to work. And people that want to believe otherwise usually are on the left and they're living, for example, let's talk about the immigrants, the illegal immigrants that were thrown up to Martha's Vineyard. All these rich, all these rich liberals, it's like, oh, you know, we love them. I was like, oh God, the brown people are here, get them out of here. And what was the first thing they did? Within 48 hours, they had those dudes out of there. On. So it's like these same people that are calling for this whole multiculturalism, let them in. They're the last ones to actually volunteer any, any type of support outside of just let me tweet and change my profile picture. And, and like I said, I'm not even trying to keep white knighting for immigration, but I, I can't tell you how many like small restaurants I go to and it's run by immigrants. I think somebody that wants to come to America and have a better life, yeah. I encourage that. But I just hate for all the veterans that are struggling getting kicked out of their hotels. So people that are from yeah. Venezuela that have long criminal records yeah. that are basically just coming here to cause, I don't know, chaos. Mm-hmm. But what, what about this conspiracy? And I don't have the video, but there's kind of a conspiracy that terrorists are coming into this country. We're going to talk about this later in the episode, that tomorrow could be some sort of global day of jihad. But so do you think it's possible that there could be terrorists coming in and there could be splinter cell groups and they're all coming through the southern border? Do you think that's a conspiracy? Or is they're already it, here. So you do think yeah, that's 100% true? they're already here. I mean, think about it. Logistically, that's, that's the smartest bet you could ever make is to infiltrate America through the southern border. You've got a Biden administration that has literally welded the doors open. It's anybody is welcome. Biden said, come, come, come. And then they come. And they're like, oh, whoa, slow down. But now you've got no vetting process, no vetting system. So and especially during COVID, like everybody was so scared about COVID, yet immigrants that come from these third world countries, they didn't have access to the vaccines like yeah. we did. Thank you, Trump. <laughs> and yet we don't really manage them. They're just like, come on in, bring your COVID with you. So liberals, by and large, are responsible for that open southern border. And honestly, it's going to take another 9-11 before people, even even that being said, I still don't even think that would get a lot of people out of the left to get their heads out of their ass. Oh, my gosh. But the thing <clears> you <throat> just said that another 9-11, there's going to be a false flag attack like that, something like Potentially, that. Yeah, something that's going to get us involved. In I don't know like what I don't know what it is, but I mean, there is going to be something that they oh, it's might- Israel right now. Let's let's not even kid ourselves. There's a lot of people out there 
Like Lindsey Graham's probably got a massive erection right well, now. He loves it. If we can just go over there, it's like, yeah, let's commit troops. Like, no, I am tired of sending America's sons and daughters to go fight in these. We were lied to about Iraq. I felt victim to that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm pushing 40 now. It's 17. We all want to be a part of something. We want to, we want to defend America against the bad guys before you realize and think, like, wait a minute. Are we are we the bad guys? Yeah, it's like, like we, we shouldn't have been. Are we the bad guys? We still don't have weapons of mass destruction. So it's like, what the hell do we do? So we keep we keep having these old rich boomer politicians saying we're going to send troops, we're going to send troops. I kind of believe in the colonial days. Like if you want to send them, you're going to go fight with them. Hey, Ian Miles J Chung, uh, J I hope you're listening. <laughs> you want to commit forces? Put your money where your mouth is. I'll pay for your ticket. I will pay for your plane ticket to get out of Malaysia and go enlist in the IDF and put your money where your mouth is. If you yeah, want wait. American troops to go do your fighting. Go lead by example. Elaborate why you don't like Ian Miles Strong. I think this guy is a grifter. I think Elon Musk made a very big mistake when he monetized people based upon engagement. So now what you've got is these influencers, quote unquote, putting out the most obnoxious, ridiculous statements, trying like to stir the people's yeah. emotions, saying, we need to commit troops. We need to make, commit troops. It's like, bro, you're old enough. Go. Go, go fight in Ukraine. Go, f but but again, it comes down to well, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I got I got bone spurs. It, okay, sure, bone spurs. Sure. Wow, bone I like spurs. that. I like I'll that. I'll call them out on that. Absolutely. Well, what does it say about me? One of the things is is you know I don't I really hated all of the terrorist stuff. Hated that they're flying in there. But one of the reasons why I don't want them to level uh, Gaza is because I feel bad for all the stray cats and dogs that are going to die. <laughs> no, seriously, I meant that. I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. I'm not too worried about some terrorists dying. But those dang cats. I don't want those cats to. Die. I feel bad for the I feel bad for the women and children, but let's not even get it twisted. Hamas in, again, when IDF decides to go door to door, and they will after they bombed and crater a lot of military targets. Do you really think? And this is for all the libertarians out there that just basically want to sit on their hands and be pacifists and say, "Oh, smoke pot and peace." It doesn't work that way. But when you sit there and you talk about like, what about the innocent men and women, and children, specifically women and children? You really think Hamas wouldn't strap bombs on them and send them out into the streets? Absolutely, they would. And they've done this. They did this with us. Let me let me educate people. I get fired up about this. Yeah. We were in this OP in Afghanistan. It was right outside the Korangal Valley. If you've seen the documentary Restrepo, it was the dangerous, most dangerous valley in the world. Now, what were we well, doing? What made it so dangerous? Real quick, just, just you you. Get shot at. It didn't matter like where you were at. Like you were getting a fire. You're getting a shot. No oh, matter absolutely. what. Okay, it I didn't just, matter. I just wanted to know what made it so dangerous. Okay, yeah, sorry, it was Men's Health came out and did an article on our little combat outpost, and it was a tiny little place. Nobody wanted to come visit us because we'd get rockets all the time. So, and it was literally you're living in sandbag bunkers. You don't go outside because snipers on the mountains would get you. So what we would do is we'd have this little op on top of a mountain, op hammerhead. Uh, shout out to the men of Michigan. I don't know if you're watching this, but God bless you. I hope you're doing good. I know God the bless we the men through. out there. Yes, sir. Those guys went through hell, man. Like, we went through hell. Uh, but anyway, this observation post was on top of a ridge. Our base was down here. A click down the road, there was another mountain ridge. And what Taliban would do is they'd launch rockets over that, that ridge line to hit our base, but they bring kids with them sometimes. Because the way we could basically triangulate where they launch from, we'd return fire with artillery. Well, guess what? You kill a kid, Taliban's going to take that kid, and they're going to parade him around the town saying, look what the Americans did, and you've just created 10 more terrorists. Or they'd take a kid with a PKM, and he'd go over that ridge line, and he'd stand there, and we'd sit there with our friggin' rifles, and we'd watch this kid, and he's baiting us to take a shot. They want us to shoot this kid. Taliban didn't care about this. This is Islamic extremism that we are fighting. Israel is dealing with it now, but Israel knows how to fight that battle. They know how to go in there and win. Americans don't, because we are so handcuffed by these progressive candy asses that are like, well, we gotta fight warfare. No, there's no fairness in war. There's none. You go in there and you do what you gotta do. You murder them, mother. Yeah, be careful, yeah, yeah. Murder them, and then you get the out video and you game. deal with what in you gotta do. In the video game, we're talking about Call video of Duty games, right now. Video yeah. games, Call of Duty. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, when you talk about this, when you talk about like the, the idea of like just you know, killing these citizens and using kids and not caring about them. I remember, remember hearing stories, especially in military bases in Afghanistan, where, like, there'd be, and you know this better than me, like, there'd be little shops or something, and maybe a kid would work at the shop, and they would strap bombs on the kids yeah. and blow up the kids. Oh, my God. We had a uh, Michael So, Cable. like, you would think you're dealing with a little kid, and there's a bomb, and you blow up. Bro, Michael Cable, rest in peace. Um, the deployment, the 101st, went on after I, I had to go be a drill sergeant. They went back to the same area we were at in Afghanistan, and Michael Cable was a mortarman. And they were having what they call a KLE, a, a leader's engagement, where the lieutenant talks to the village imam and stuff like that. And you try and kiss their ass and make good. And this kid walks up behind Cable and just slits his throat. Wait, why he's talking to the imam? Yeah. And so he it wasn't Cable. Cable's pulling security. He turns around. This little kid walks up with a kitchen knife, just cuts his throat and kills him. They don't care about you. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you want to talk about... This is in a video game. Sorry, go video ahead. Video game, yeah, there you go. But um, that's what people in the States don't seem to realize. We live in this safety bubble. All these LGBT people talking about queers for Palestine. 
you do realize the things that they, yeah, I saw that skit, mm -hmm. the things they would do to you over there, what you saw them doing to the Jewish men and women and children, pale in comparison with what they would do to you if you were a homosexual. But that's how stupid and ignorant we have of kids in this country that go to Harvard, that sit there and they celebrate Hamas. And it's like, are you kidding me with this? Like, go over there and see what they're about. And it's not this, oh, you know, they're the victims. They're not. They threw the, Hamas threw the first punch. They drew the battle lines. Anything that happens after that, blame Hamas. Don't blame the Israelis. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. It's, this is just a multicultural war. We keep using that <laughs> word that, you know, I want to, I, actually, you said that earlier. Uh, I just want to be a libertarian and smoke pot and not be involved. I was kind of like, yeah. I'm, that, I'm with them. I'm with, I'm with libertarians yeah. on that. But there comes a point where you've got to draw a line in the sand and yeah. say, okay, how many times are you going to get punched in the face? And this is the thing that people don't get about the Middle East. Israel is surrounded on all sides by I'm, these Arabs that do not like them. So if Hamas gets one over and they go in there and they murder 1,200 and Israel does not retaliate in a fashion that puts the fear of Allah in every single one of them, the rest of those Arab countries are going to smell blood in the water and they're going to start taking bites of Israel. Of course. Israel's got to make a message and that's just the way it goes. John, I actually have another because a lot of people this week have asked about it. Like, Do you think Palestinians or the non-Hamas have any legitimate grievances with Israel? Because people say like what they did, what Hamas did was indefensible, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Israel has mistreated Palestine. So yeah, what do you I, think about our that's what I'm saying. Possibly. Hey, hey, you know, that's a, now you're really getting in the woods, Jimmy, but I think mm -hmm. like, I mean, that's a very tough question. I don't know why you're such a dumbass to you to ask that question. No, no, us. it's that's a fair question. I know that, it's a most fair question. We do have to see it from both sides on no, that. No, 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 that, no, but Jimmy, that's the most fair question, but I'm saying it's like, are the Palestinians, basically you're asking, are the Palestinians justified? We can well, never say yes to that answer. Well, no, I said, I said what Hamas did was indefensible, but do they have any legitimate complaints against Israel? Well, their complaints are, yes, that they're like, settlers are they're resettling their land. They're claiming apartheid. They're claiming, yeah. but again, Israel has not been a part of the Gaza Strip since 2005. So it's like, okay. But yes, I'm sure there are reports of mistreatment on both sides. That's yeah. why I say stay out of it. But at the same time, when you cross the Rubicon and you murder innocent children... Bro, you're lucky your whole country doesn't get nuked. No. I'm serious. It's like, those are kids, and every single person out there that wants to put up their little pacifist hands and say, oh, you know, what about the kids? What if it was your sons and daughters that had committed to them what they did to those Jewish kids? What if, and that's why I feel like a lot of people, it's very easy to sit there and armchair quarterback this when you don't know logistically or, you know, have a pragmatic approach to military operations in the Middle East and what you are fighting. You are fighting an ideology. Alexander the Great couldn't conquer these people. Russia, America, the French, they are, you cannot conquer them. So the thing is, strengthen your borders, worry about America, let Israel do what they got to do and stay the hell out of it. My dad used to call me Alexander the Worst. Um, <laughs> all right. So we, we, um, sorry, we, uh, we have an ad read coming up, too. I see it for Teladoc. All right, let's scroll it, guys. So are you guys feeling like crap? I'm sure you are. So listen up. I've got something really cool and honestly potentially life-saving to share with you. Ever heard of the wellness company? If you haven't, you will. But let me be the first to tell you a bit about them, and specifically their medical emergency kit. Awake doctors like Dr. Peter McCullough started the wellness company to build a parallel healthcare system and bring about real change in medicine. Part of that change is helping you to take control of your health and supporting you through whatever the next thing is that gets thrown our way. Over 40% of Americans say they'd avoid a doctor or hospital unless it was a catastrophic situation. That's where the wellness company steps in with their medical emergency kit. It's a lifeline. Natural disasters, supply chain shortages, medical emergencies, etc. Rest easy knowing that you have emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and antiparasitics on hand to help keep you and your family safe. The kit includes a comprehensive guidebook so you'll know exactly when and how to use it. Don't sit around until it's too late. Head to twc.health/prime and grab your medical emergency kit today. Again, that's twc.health/prime. Use the code prime, it saves you 10% at checkout. It's time to take control of your health and stay one step ahead. twc.health/prime slash for 10% off. So we we got a, a super chat while we're what did the super can, chat say? So bad Buddhist. This is it was from a while ago when you were talking about voting blocks. Maybe Alex Stein should organize the chat rats into a voting block. Power to the people. Smash the like. We do need to organize the chat rats, but I want to organize them to like do something much more destructive than that. They probably would if you told them. Like to. the movie Fight Club. Have you ever seen that movie? I have. At the end of it, what did they do? They blew up all the buildings. No, we're not supposed to talk about it. Yeah, I know. Well, this is a movie. Where I think we can talk about a movie. This In the movie, <laughs> to get rid of everybody's credit card debt, they blew up a bunch of credit card buildings. <laughs> Jimmy, little known secret, I have $800,000 in credit card debt. 
That's not good. No. So my salary here is not even basically denting it. So that's why you make me pay you to work here. That's part of it. Yeah. And sense. and I would have a lot more money if I wasn't addicted to online shopping and online gambling and online OnlyFans models. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is our guest ready? I hope not. Oh, she's ready. Did she hear the OnlyFans models part? Well, she doesn't have an OnlyFans. I know, but she didn't. She, oh, she heard it. She heard that. Damn it. Okay, well. <laughs> All right, our next <clears throat> guest is a former Trump White House staffer who I will definitely be simping on. Jimmy, why did you write that? <laughs> I'm not simping for her in an embarrassing, fa an embarrassing fashion. But you will be. I wanted to be accurate. Please welcome on Cameron Kinsey. Cameron. Hi, how are you? Jimmy, I'm not going to simp. My producer wrote some really embarrassing uh, copy describing you, Cameron, because when I'm around beautiful... You don't write your own scripts? No, I don't write anything. I can't write. I, I haven't been literate for years. I, I mean, I grew up in inner city Chicago. I was the only white guy in my eighth grade graduating class. And they used to call me fat boy. And they used to put my head in the toilet and, and just flush it constantly, constantly, constantly. The education system just not good there? No, I love that school. No, I had a blast. I miss it. I wish I could go back. But yeah, I didn't learn crap. No. Cameron, I simp. I have a problem. I deal with hot, beautiful, blonde women, and they're my weakness. I have a very... So couldn't you call it simp on a blimp? I am a simp on a blimp. <laughs> and, and Cameron, we're here with John Burke. He's a vet, so I don't know if you're into vets. Oh, my uh, God, look at the picture. Yeah, I'm a simp. But, John, this is the beautiful uh, Cameron Kinsey. She worked for your favorite person, Donald Trump. <laughs> I seem to have lost my, uh, oh, there Can we go. Can you not hear? Turn up the volumes. No, Chris, okay. audio issues. We got to fix his IFP. So, no, no, we're good. We're good. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Cameron, what the nice heck is going on? I know everybody is talking about this past weekend, and I'm like, why wasn't Taylor Swift to Travis Kelsey's game? <laughs> <laughs> I have not been following that because he... What? Wait, I what? What did you say? You have not been following that? What the hell oh. else have you been following? You haven't been following oh, the Travis Kelsey Swifties? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Gibby, what kind of hot blonde chick did you book on the show? I thought you were Taylor Swifty all the way. You I look like Taylor Swift. I only have Taylor not Swift graphics. This is going to be awkward. What do we talk I about? I'm not a Swifty. Why are you so anti Taylor Swift, Cameron? Why are you so pro Taylor Swift? I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. What did Taylor Swift do to you? First of all, she's LGBTQ pride. So I love that. She, the tough friendly bathing suit I tried at Target was actually developed for a woman with her hips. So her and I have similar body, similar body shape. So those are the two reasons why I like Taylor. Now, tell me why you don't like Taylor. Was the song Blank Space? Well, did, you, did you see her photo with the cookies, the Biden, the Biden 2020 cookies? Would you eat one of those? Yeah, but I have, I mean, I'm overweight and I eat a lot of uh, cookies and stuff. I actually have diabetes. I probably shouldn't eat those cookies, but that's neither here nor there. Uh. But yeah, I mean, listen, what's wrong with Joe Biden? I kind of like his son, Hunter. He smokes crack. I smoke crack. What's wrong with that? Oh, I mean, if you want to go join him at the strip clubs, then go for it. I mean, to each their own. Honestly, I, I would hang out with Hunter Biden. John, you're telling me you wouldn't hang out with Hunter I'm Biden? I'm staying out of this one. I'm no, out okay, out because one. listen, Cameron, we have to I'm talk. I'm already on a list somewhere, bro. We have I'm to not talk about my biological this. stepdad, Tucker Carlson. He's like the closest person in my life. And a lot of people gave you him. You are a mini Tucker. Thank you, Cameron. I appreciate that. And a lot of people gave him flack because when Tucker was trying to get his son into one of the most elite private schools in the world in Washington, D.C., he asked the vice president's son for a letter of recommendation. Did you know this? Either of you guys know this? No. Yeah, so this all came out in the email leaks. So yeah. <laughs> Tucker and Hunter have been talking. And I actually asked Tucker about this when I met him. This is real. This is real. I know I joke around. And Tucker said Hunter's a really nice guy and that he's really misunderstood and that, you know, he's really not as liberal as he acts. That's the first thing Tucker said. He said he's not as liberal as you think. And Joe Biden was always kind of a more conservative liberal, I think, wasn't he? Yeah, that's an Obama era Democrat or a Clinton era Kinda, Democrat. I'm just yeah. saying. So he's not as bad. He just yeah. said Hunter Biden's not as bad. I hate the illegal business dealings with Ukraine, but the fact that he's at a strip club, at least he's not gay, right? I don't. I don't. Oh gosh, Alex! What, Jimmy? <laughs> it's like it's like the it's the conversation that's going on on internet right now, where it's like, would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? What would you rather have? I'd rather have a I'd rather have a thought daughter. <laughs> oh, no, I'd rather have a hot thought now. daughter. She fifth. gets listen. If my daughter takes on ten sausages, good for her. She earned it. All right. I don't want her getting pregnant. I don't want to get her knocked up. But my daughter's going to be hot, all right? So I don't blame her. Hey, for hey Alex, let's ask her about the White House. Oh, okay. Um, so, Cameron, <laughs> is it true 
that the White House was originally called the Black House, but then they changed it to the White House during uh, civil rights. Oh, well, I can that, neither confirm true? nor deny that. No, no, I think fact check false. Has it always been white? Has it always been white? Has it ever, ever been another color? I mean, maybe when they were constructing it, it wasn't always white. But as far as far back as I can remember, it's been white. I think it was burned at one point, so technically it was kind of black. It's kind of black. They're Andrew Jackson, right? That's what I'm no. saying, but I don't like the White House. That sounds racist as hell. I think it should be the Rainbow oh, House. Casablanca? What about Casablanca? Jo Jimmy, why did you put this beautiful picture of Cameron like well, this? I what just, are you trying I, to do? I, I, what I is this? I Google image Cameron Kinsey White House, and the Reddit page for Republican hotties came up, so I'm like, and it said former <laughs> White House staffer, so I figured that'd make her feel nice. Cameron, serious question. Is it a blessing or a curse being a beautiful woman? Um, well, that is, that was very nice. Thank you. Um, I guess it just comes with a lot of trolling and a lot of hate, but. Are they jealous? Are they jealous to say, oh, look at her. She's got a beautiful smile, great hair. I think, I think the media just uses that as a ploy to be like, well, okay, she can't, there's no conservative woman that can be beautiful and intelligent. So well, That's not, that doesn't just go for me. That goes for a lot of conservative women on this side of the aisle. There's a lot of conservative hotties. Trust me, I know. I mean, and you're, you're just one of them. But I think the conservative sides are more pretty. I mean, I think that, would you say, what liberal kind of talking heads are really hot? Rachel AOC. Adams. AOC. AOC is hot, I mean, yes. My AOC. favorite big booty Latina, but she's an actual <laughs> congressman. I'm talking about, like, anybody on TV that we know of. Like, who is a hot uh, Oh, my God, dude. Commentator. I, I would. I well, when would. I was working in the White House, there was a reason that conservative women didn't want to cover their face with a mask, I'll tell you that, because all of them are very, very beautiful on that side of the aisle, so. Emerald, uh, Emerald's hot. Jimmy, remember how hot Emerald was? I'd, I'd take a shot yeah. at Joy Behar. No, you wouldn't. Joy Behar. You gotta love the ugly women. Ro roast Beef Behar, that's Absolutely. what they call her. They call her Roast Beef Behar. You wouldn't. She knows yeah. what she's doing. She's got a mouth that doesn't stop. She has. Oh, totally she kidding. literally has like a two pounds of roast beef in between her. <laughs> That's I'm what the, I heard. I swear. Why, I'm not why, even, why would that? you know that, Alex? Why, why would you know that? Why would I know that she has a bunch of roast beef? I don't want to get into it, but I know one of her ex-boyfriends, and it's somebody that you know too. And I don't want to. I don't want them to know. They're actually kind of a well-known uh, celebrity. Hey, Cameron, tell a funny story between you and Donald Trump. Jimmy, this is my interview. <laughs> Jimmy, shut the hell I'm up. To keep you on track. No, I don't want to get on track. Okay, Cameron. This is one thing. Are you worried about the day of global uh, jihad tomorrow? Honestly, on a more serious note, I kind of am. I was actually just discussing this with a friend of mine who has uh, her husband's flying back into D.C. tomorrow, and I advised her to tell him to cancel the flight. I'm not too sure. I know that it's probably going to be um, maybe more chaotic in the bigger cities. But again, I'm in Tampa, Florida, and I saw pro-Palestine uh, protests break out here out of all places, which is super random. So I think everybody should just stay on high alert. And if you need to pull your kids out of school, pull them out if you don't feel comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, on a serious note, I kind of am worried. Yeah, and on a serious note, this is a corn dog on a necklace. And uh, because the <laughs> Islam, they cannot eat pork. So if you guys want to be protected tomorrow, everybody should go get a corn dog and tape it around your neck. It is kind of like a garlic to a vampire. If they see the pork, they can't attack you. I know it, and it, I know it's weird. You're gonna have a corn dog rosary, but you can make <laughs> you can make a hot dog crucifix as long as it's pork. If you have bacon, strap some bacon around your wrist, and that can protect you. Okay, so Cameron. Very stylish. Uh, uh, so we have one more thing, a producer question. Jimmy, how many damn questions is this? The Jimmy Idiot Show, or is this the Alex Beautiful um, Male Model Show? I, did, I don't think it's either. <laughs> oh, so now you're trying to say I'm not a male model. And you're that right, I'm not you're right. Models, my bad, my bad. Yeah, Actually, that I'm not one of the top models. And that a lot of brands want me to represent their lines, but I don't agree with them politically. And I've lost a lot of work because of that. I see it. Thank and you. You did give a lot of publicity to the Tuck Friendly Bathing Suits. And Balenciaga wanted me. They wanted me to uh, model that, uh, it was that exterior dildo necklace that was so popular. And you remember I almost modeled it still, but I... They treated my values. No, you're right. But I want to show, can you get that graphic up? I was telling you, George. So <laughs> I'm trying to train Alex. I don't know if you know the context of this, Cameron. We had on Trevor Bauer's accuser to give her side of the story. She's a liar, 
Uh, nah, but Alex, she's nah. allegedly a liar. She's and allegedly Alex, a liar. And well, she Alex has spent- D-cut breasts. So women with D-cut breasts, it's hard for them to lie. So Al- <laughs> Alex spent the whole episode just flirting with her and a serious topic. I didn't so, even, I, I shot my shot a little bro, bit. Yeah, I shot victim. my shot, but shoot or shoot, so, bitch ass. So, so I'm trying to train <laughs> Alex to simp less. So Alex, can you say something mean to Cameron? This is training. You okay. don't have to flirt with everyone. Cameron, I got four boosters because of Donald Trump, and I blame you. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Okay, this training is that good. Did that work? That, that was pretty good. That was. Do you like feel that. uncomfortable? Do you feel uncomfortable, Cameron? No, I want to come back on with you. I love this. Ah, she loves it. Dang it, Jimmy. Even when I try not to simp, I still simp. John, what do you want to ask Cameron while we still have her? Uh, what are your thoughts on Trump now? Uh, post um, White House. Ooh, the hardball hall. He no, no, no ill intent meant by it. I know people just where do you stand now with Donald Trump? What do you think his chances are in uh, the primaries? I think a lot of people miss him, especially now with the conflict between Hamas and, and Israel. We would have never had this happen under President Donald Trump. He, we signed historic peace deals in the Middle East. He was the first president to step foot into North Korea. Uh, people respected us on a global stage, and, and people miss that. We're seeing these words being touted on social media with Biden saying that he stands with Israel. He's very firm on that. But uh, his decision to send $6 billion to Iran says otherwise. So we need a leader back in the White House, and I believe Donald Trump is the person to do that. You think DeSantis could do it? Or you think he'd do it better or worse? It's not his time yet. I don't believe that it's his time. Uh, he's a great governor of Florida. I will say that. I've always stood by that. That's why I moved to moved to Florida in the first place. It, it was known to be the freedom state, and it's beautiful. I never want to leave, but I don't think it's his time, and I think he was stepping on the toes of the one guy who was trying to prop him up for success. I, think I can respect that opinion because I, there's a lot of people um, that are pro-Trump that when DeSantis made the announcement to run who were Floridians or currently are Floridians, they turned on him and they started pretending that he was the worst governor ever. So I can respect the fact that you're holding true to your honesty as far as he's a good governor. I, I you know, when DeSantis first hit the scene, I was like, I don't like politicians in general. I want to watch him and see what he does. DeSantis has done good, but I can respect the fact that you're at least being honest, saying he's still a good governor versus some people like your Cernoviches and people that flipped on him. And it's like, look, that's just being intellectually dishonest. It's not a lie. But yeah, and respect, respect for holding true to that. And that's the thing is, I do respect DeSantis as a governor, but don't you think if he would have waited four years, he had a slam dunk, though, don't you think? Not necessarily, but I don't want to get into it. No, I know, I, I know. I, I mean, I, yeah, that's a long story. I'm just saying, and I'm not even telling him not to run. It's his political campaign. Yeah. But I'm just like, hey, if I was him, I would almost try to be vice president. Did you ever think about that, yeah, All of those, And all of those donors would have backed him. He would have had the MAGA base, but right now... Now there's, it's such a divisive uh, narrative between DeSantis supporters and Trump supporters. So uh, that kind of burned the bridge there. So I don't think that's... I don't, you know, I don't know. Trump does, he does make nice with a lot of people. I mean, you look at Ted Cruz, called his wife ugly. I, I think there are a lot of things that get said during the primaries that people usually go back on. But then you also look at when Trump was on the tail end of his presidency, how many Republicans flipped on him. So it's kind of like... You take everything at face value. I know, everybody's full of crap. Yeah, everybody's full of crap, yeah. Two-sided. Okay, before you go, so you were a college cheerleader, Cameron. I was, yes, at the University of Louisville. Oh, that's awesome. A great football school. With the guys when they'd lift When Lamar Jackson won the Heisman. Oh, you were a cheerleader when Lamar Jackson won the Heisman? And you had that great coach that year. Who was a good coach? Uh, uh, For football? Yeah, didn't you have that? Petrino? No. Was it Petrino? He left. That was was basketball. Basketball? Oh, uh, whatever. That was Rick Patino. Yeah, yeah Patino was good. But tell me this, Cameron, when they would stunt you, did they get to touch your butt? I always wanted to be a male cheerleader because I thought I'd get to touch the cheerleaders' butts. But they yeah. said that that's not true. Were they lying to me? Did the guys get to touch your butt when they lifted you in there? Depended on the stunt. I mean, if you were held in like a shoulder position, yeah, they would. Hey, man, Jimmy, why did I play football, the gay sport? I'm wrestling <laughs> around with dudes. And I could have been behind my hand up cheerleader skirts my whole freaking life. I think it's because you're on that list. They Jimmy, wouldn't let shut you. up. All right, Cameron, tell the people where they can find you and support you before you go. Yeah, absolutely. You can just follow my handle at Cameron Bailey on all platforms. And uh, if you need me for any uh, public relations stuff, you can email me at Cameron at PraetorianPR.com. Yeah, Cameron, I'm going to need you for a whole bunch of stuff, all right? So I'm going to be DMing you, calling you constantly. Answer them all. Do not leave me on red. And I uh, hope to make you my wife one day. All right, have a good evening. See you, Cameron. Bye. Shoot or shoot, guys. That's how it works. All right. 
And we got another ad read. Oh, I love <laughs> this. Fil- now we got a real good one. John, we've never had more than one ad read. I we know. Have three. I know. And then we have three. Betting on your favorite sports team is a lot of fun. And it can even be profitable when you have a good sense of what you're doing. That's where a good sports book can really come in handy. But how do you know you're choosing the right one? When your money is on the line, you need to choose a trusted sports book that gives you the tools to win, like my bookie at my bookie, all right? At my bookie, it doesn't matter if your team is up or down. You can easily cash out or bet the game live to come out on the winning side. Use my bookie for daily odds boost, same game parlays, and take advantage of huge Huge prize pool contest. Plus, my bookie has a no strings attached cash bonus that lets you deposit and withdraw quickly. Just use the promo code Alex on your first deposit and receive up to two hundred dollars in cash. That's promo code Alex to claim your own cash bonus now. Try my bookie money bag to grab a potential Super Bowl front runner at long shot odds of plus thirty eight thousand on the Eagles and Chiefs. You won't find odds like that anywhere else. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Only with my bookie. Dot com. Guys, go to mybookie.com. Use the promo code Alex. Gambling is dangerous, and it is illegal in some places, but it's legal here. But I'm just saying it can get sketchy. I love to gamble. It's one of my favorite things to do. But it's, uh, you know, gamble at your own risk, and don't gamble something that you can't afford to lose. But it's fun as hell, and I do encourage people to have fun. So play at your own risk. All right, so. Uh, we got to do the quick reaction video and then right into jihad training. Oh, is this the military uh, reaction video? Yeah. All right. So look at this video, John. You can see that monitor is probably better. So this is on a mission in Afghanistan, and they forgot to hook the ladder. So how are they going to get out? Maybe we can run that one more time. If you're in that helicopter, is that ladder important? I mean, you can, depending on what they're trying to do right there, you can always land and pick it up, or the ground forces can grab it for you. But, yeah, it's pretty damn important. Damn, dude. I'm just like... Stuff like that happens all the time, man, quite honestly. God bless them, you know, they're doing the best they got. But, I mean, you got to remember sometimes if you're under fire or whatever, adrenaline gets pumping, mistakes get made. I just love watching that, though. I don't know why, because he's looking at it. He's, he's, you know what's going through his head? is like, I'm getting my ass chewed for this yeah, one. I'm done. I, I just love that video because <laughs> the way it falls, it's like a slinky. And then the way he's just like, oh. Up. I'm glad it didn't clip him and take away. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's in there. He's clipped in, but still. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's just a stupid ladder. But yeah. I just watched that video. I was like, we're having John on. I want to get his reaction <laughs> to that. Just, Aah! Oh, forgot to clip it. But uh, guys, being in the military, John, is it hard? I know that seems like an understatement, but what's like, what's the hardest part of being in the military? Being away from your family, being scared you're going to die. What's the hardest part? You you get used to the the uh, the thing of death. You you tend to ignore. It. You don't think about. It. You don't dwell on stuff like that. That keeps you from doing your mission. I, I, honest, the scariest thing. I think it depends on which role you play. But for me, it was always the idea of making the wrong call and getting somebody killed, losing a guy. Oh, yeah, the stress of your other your other people that depend on you. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. why uh, you dedicate yourself to studying tactics, being as physically fit as you can, uh, being as proficient with all your tools. I highly recommend any of your service members that are currently still serving. Read the memoirs of Dick Winters. Um, very insightful. Very insightful. He was the Band of Brothers, Easy Company, Company Commander, Band of Brothers about him, and all the men that served uh, in the 101st Airborne. But... Uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably one of the biggest things is uh, making sure that you don't do the wrong thing, get somebody Fear killed. of losing one of your teammates. Yeah. You know, that is a big deal because that's why team sports are so important because you realize that my job, yeah. I have to do my job so other people can do their job. Yep. So it's, you know, it's kind of this team building thing that, you know, it makes you think less of yourself. Football teams definitely have it down pat. Like, you, yeah, look at your yeah. defensive linemen. They got to work together to make sure you protect the linebackers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So it is. And a if team. one dude in the line falls, then the whole thing hole. crumbles. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. We've been getting a lot of deep inside baseball military stuff with our man, John Burke. But sadly, right now what's happening in the world is there is a call for what is called a global jihad. And they are threatening to do it this Friday on Friday the 13th. And if you know anything about anything about terror, they love to use dates and times that are memorable. So the idea that Friday the 13th is falling on exactly a week after the original Hamas Hamas attacks... I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to be a pusher of trauma-based mind control. But there's a strong possibility there's going to be crazy people that do crazy things tomorrow. So we want to make sure here at Prime Time with Alex Stein that you are protected. So we're going to run through a few different Hamas terrorist scenarios. And we're going to show you how you can protect yourself and how you can be safe from a jihadi terrorist attack. Why is that so funny, John? Well, because I don't know what you're about to do. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> I don't know you what know, you're no, about no, to do. No, no, you're not on set yet. You're not on set yet. You're such a dumbass. <laughs> okay, all right. Tiny, get on set now. That's... Uh...
Uh, gosh, why don't you know anything, Darius? Whatever, whatever's like, about Darius. to happen, I apologize. I'm yeah. not involved in it. <laughs> okay, so you're right here. So this is, and then you're gonna come in from that side, like we practice. Did we ever practice that you came on this side? Wait, wait, not until I say go. So now we are with Big Nasty, aka Tiny, and he's gonna show you how to protect yourself if an ISIS Hamas terrorist comes in your house. Now, when I say action, you're gonna burst into his house, and then he's gonna show you how to defeat a Hamas terrorist. You might need to get back. And uh, be loud. Be loud so they can hear you. Okay, when I say action, burst through the door. Bam! Gentlemen, show me your Kazar Jagans. Kazar Jagans. I'm black. <laughs> I'm not Jewish, and I don't wanna be part of none of that shit, man. My people done been through enough. I'm out. I respect your solidarity. Black, Black Lives Matter. Yes! And now everybody understands because Black Lives Matter supports Hamas. So if you're a black person, show that you're black. Because hey, that is cool. The blacks and Hamas are vibing right now. So great job. Give it up for Tiny. Use, use him as an example, okay? If they come at you, remember to remind them that you're black and that you're not Jewish. And you should be okay. Cooking oil and sand. Stop, stop. <laughs> okay, now round two. Now, come on out here. Okay, you're Infidel, good. Infidel, get on the ground. No, it's not, we're not ready yet. You, not, you don't know how to do anything. Get off set. When I say action, come on set. Now, this is round two. This is your typical liberal. And you're gonna see the most important thing during a terrorist attack is to have your mask. Because as, as much as you think that terrorism is dangerous, COVID is much, much scarier. So we're gonna run through the scenario. I want you to watch Brandon, and you're going to learn how you can defeat an Hamas terrorist coming into your house. All right, when I say action, you bust in. Ready? Action! Infidel, get off the ground! Wait, Where's your wait, wife? Wait, wait, wait! COVID's the real enemy. Mask up first. <laughs> no! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right now! Oh, God. Now, what he has is the corn dog crucifix. All Muslims are scared of pork. This should scare you. Now, oh, scared. no! I, I surrender! Please deport me to Sweden now! <laughs> I am Muslim terrorist! Oh, man! I, this I, is hit the terrorist oh. in the face of the dog! Hit the terrorist with the dogs in the face! That's how you defeat them! That's how you defeat them! How do you like that, terrorist? You like those corn dogs on your face? Say, ah! Oh. Ah! Ah! Oh. Ah! Get the terrorist like that! Get the terrorist like that! Ah! That's how you defeat it. Why did you eat that? <laughs> These are frozen solid. <laughs> You're such a monster. These are kosher. No, they're not. These are 100% pork and they're frozen solid. <laughs> the look of shame on your face right now. There's a saying of the prophet that, that you must do things that are sometimes against the bulk to infiltrate and to survive and to cause jihad. All right, John, your turn. So right, you've John, actually been military. Turn. Now, now, how, yeah, yeah, how do you stop a real terrorist? Okay, now, the, how, now you show, how do you really stop a terrorist? Now, when we say action, jump in. Now, John's going to show you how to stop a terrorist. All right. Oh, Jesus. Okay, you're going to have to come. No, no, you hold the gun. John, this is your scenario now. Uh, when I say action, you run in. You're Hamas, and John is going to show you the militarily approved way of defeating an ISIS terrorist or Hamas terrorist. Ready, action. Drop your weapon. Where is your rifle? Well, if I was a Democrat, I guess I would just go ahead and do this. Oh, oh. oh no, 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 you can Oh, that works. Okay, guys, so it's either tell them you're black, tell them you have corn dogs, or give them a BJ. Either way, you are going to survive. So remember what you learned here at Primetime with Alex Stein. Sometimes a corn dog, you know, throwing it, or sometimes sucking it. Either way, you're going to be safe. I want township in England. Get out of here. Get out of the set. Get out of here! I'm sick of these London, people. I go to London. Get, stand. get this. Show him. Show him right now. Ah! <laughs> Damn, I missed him. Go clean up those corn dogs. Give me that. Bring the gel blaster, care. Bring the gel blaster. Hurry, 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 hurry. Have you ever used one of these weapons? No, I've seen these though. So you can shoot me. Show it wide. Don't shoot me in the face. Why do you want me That's to shoot? Just, I just want to show the people how tough I am. Do these hurt? 
a little bit. All right, so. Tell me where. Well, this is what I, this is another, just kind of shoot me in the uh, chest area. So guys, this is, I want to show you that do not be scared of a weapon. I'm gonna take a shot, I'm gonna take a bullet to show you that you should not live in fear. All right, shoot me. Here we go. More. Shoot me more. Not in the face. You want more? Penis. Yeah. Not in the face or penis. I mean, the penis is kind of there. Okay, shoot me a penis. Oh, it's a shoot small my penis. It's a small shoot target. Shoot my penis. Ow! <laughs> oh, he shot my hole. I hit my testicle. The penis didn't hurt. The part where he hit my testicle, it actually hurt. <sighs> you need some salt or No, go. Give me some ice. <laughs> give me some. Roll that shot? Give me ice. Do not rub it. Get out of here. Give me some ice for my testicles. Go get me oh, some ice. Get it, stop rubbing my test. Get out of here. You okay, get out of here. No, I'm not okay. I'm not freaking okay. I'm not okay. Oh, I can't even break anything anymore. Nothing breaks anymore. I'm getting shot in the dick. How many viewers do we have, Jimmy? 1,100. Okay, that's good. All right, I'll turn <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> A lot of numbers for that. Alex, sure. Just Shut up. Call. No, get out of here. <laughs> Look at it, show. I shouldn't be shooting the camera. All right, I mean, all right. <sighs> so, what's gonna happen tomorrow? Do you really think there's gonna be an attack or anything? I don't know. I mean, all, all we can say is carry. Carry concealed uh, and be prepared because um, I think if people stay observant, report things to the police, you know, take care of your families, but ultimately don't live in fear. Don't, don't give them what they want. Stand up against it and just say, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to carry it. If I see something, say something. But don't give them the satisfaction of living in fear. That's not, that's not what we should do. And do they use fear to control the military, too? Because we know they use fear to control the government's civil, you know, civilians. Do they scare you? Do they use fear tactics to scare military? To about our own military to yeah. ourselves? Oh, absolutely. Not in a sense of, like, you're going to die, but more so, like, you're your ass chewed. Or what they call getting smoked. Like you well, go out there and do push ups, sit ups, stuff like that. But the reason why I asked is because you said this, because fear is the biggest manipulation tool that the people in power use against us. Yeah. And so that's why when I see this, and I know we're joking, making jokes about Hamas and Day of Terror, but I do think something could happen because there's just crazy people out there. And if you hear one rumor, you know, now they're like, oh, I feel radicalized. Well, I mean, you know. they called for it too. I mean, and, you know, we saw the same thing on the anniversary of 9 11 where Hillary is like, you know, what does it matter? So it's, I, I think it's, it'd be foolish to ignore it, but not, uh, let it control you. Yeah, don't live in fear, guys. That's the, that's the main thing I try to take away from anything you watch that I do is I try to be fearless. That doesn't mean I don't get scared. That doesn't mean the situation. Oh, no, you are fearless. The yeah. stuff that you do, it's like, God bless. Good for you. Good well, for you. Well, it's just because, like, what are the repercussions? How many, how many death threats do you get from the stuff I got, you pull? Somebody, on my Marshawn Lynch video, somebody, I left, like, three death threats. And then also somebody <laughs> said, somebody needs to shoot me in real life. And this is all in a video game. But, um... My point is, yeah, I get those death threats. I don't care about that. I mean, threats yeah. on the internet. But uh, what I did notice when I stopped living in fear, like during the pandemic, when I stopped worrying about the opinions of strangers, yeah. I mean, because you still kind of worry about the opinions of your friends, family, and stuff like that. But when you really don't care about the opinions of strangers, people that don't matter, and you stop living in fear, <laughs> my life changed for the better tremendously. You're, man, I think people care so much about the online opinions of strangers. I've got three good friends that I, I trust implicitly, and that's all I need. Everything else doesn't matter. I've got a very good girlfriend that loves me. I've got a good business partner. He has I a have, big booty Latina as well, John. I, Why I did actually, you admit that? I do. I have a Persian Latina. So it's if I don't act right, I'm either getting shivved or hitting with an IED. Wait, so, so she's Persian. <laughs> so she's Persian and Latina. She's okay. Persian and Latina. Oh and she's wow. The thing That's ever. extra yeah. spicy. That's yeah. like uh, super spicy. No, I see. I should have brought her so you can meet her. So she's she's welcome anytime. I'll bring her next time. You'd no, love her. So so you got good friends. You got your girlfriend. Those are the opinions that you care about. The people you love. But well, like, I'll I'll be honest. Even them, I, I do treasure and value their opinions, but every man and woman has to stand accountable for the things that they, they believe or don't believe in. So, you know, I, I think you're onto something when you just stop caring. People care too much, and I'm not trying to come off as a jerk here, but you've got to stand true to your beliefs, whatever they may be. And if that's, if that's what you believe, don't back down in the face of, you know, people that want to come out there and say that you're this, that, and the other. They want you to cave. I mean, look at, uh, look at the Kardashians. Look at these people that, that you know, tweeted out and supported Immediately Israel. deleted I mean, eight you're minutes. Cowards. Like here, I mean, here, I have more respect for somebody that says I'm on the side of Hamas than somebody that says I'm pro-Israel and deletes it because of pressure. You're a coward. Just stand up, 
be on your side, and if people don't like you, who cares? No, and, and if you're worth a billion dollars like Kylie Jenner and somebody tells you to delete something, then you're not worth a billion dollars. You're worthless. Because you're a slave. You, yeah, you're a slave. That means somebody can control you. Yeah. You should have all that money. You should be able to say, F you. I support Israel. I don't care. You know, I'm just saying it's stupid that these people are afraid to actually speak in, in you know, truthfully or yeah. actually say what they feel. That's why I feel like a lot of people, um, they just they conceal and they cover up. They're afraid of being canceled. You can't be canceled unless you allow them to. How many people have we seen time and time again buck the system and say, you're not going to cancel me? It's not going to happen. I'm not apologizing. What do they do? They move on to the next target and the next target. So it's like this, this group of just screaming, purple-haired, HIV-infested just groups of people that want to come after you and say that unless you succumb and take the need of what we want, our demands, you know, we're going to cancel you. And then you say, no, it's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to recant. They'll move on to the next target. Yeah. And that's all it is. Well, uh, you know, I have HIV, so I don't know why you want I know. That's why I said yeah, okay, that. Okay, yeah. good. Because I, my, it's just minor I HIV. I still got to get tested Cameron, after that Friday night. Yeah, you need to get tested. And Cameron, yeah. if you're watching this, it's minor HIV and it's not <laughs> age yet. So I just want everybody to know this. Okay, John. Man, it's always a privilege to get your you insight because I know that you've been there, you've done it, and you speak your mind. You don't pull the punches that most people do. So I really appreciate that. So tell the people how they can support you and find you. Uh, you can download the podcast, allamericansavagesshow.com, uh, johnburke.com, wherever podcasts are downloaded. Follow me on Twitter at johnburke39, Instagram, johnburkeig. And, yeah, I, I consider myself a constitutionalist, much like yourself. And I yeah. love the conversations that we have offline, dude. A lot of respect for what you and Jimmy and the crew does here. Do not yeah. thank Jimmy. Jimmy does a terrible job. <laughs> All right, screw you, Jimmy. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. you now, go. that's thank good. You. Jimmy's right. the one that invited me here. You didn't even invite me. He invited me. First of all, I told Why are you giving him so I much fun? I told flat? Jimmy to invite you. And second of all, I don't. <laughs> I, Jimmy doesn't. No, don't worry about Jimmy. He's after this episode. I still love you, Jimmy. I, thank you. Appreciate it. Congratulations on the soon to be kid. Thank you. And your wife. Uh, but and, Alex you keeps know. telling me I have weak semen because it's a dr I'm it's having a girl. a girl. He's not wrong on that. Yeah, that's see, I told you. You have soft semen. You have weak sperm. You do have weak sperm. The weakest yeah. sperm, and trust me, I've drank a lot of what? Uh, 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 okay, okay uh, but before the freestyle finale, I have to give one shout out to a guy. One of Alex's fans sent me a bunch Matt. of cigars as a dad. Oh, like, what about the other graphics? Did you put the chat rag graphic in? Oh, shoot, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I had to put in my picture of me. I love how you put a picture of you, but then the one chat, we had a live chat. We had a, a guy live wearing a chat rat shirt. And I'll, you don't, I'll plaster uh, it. Or, I'll, I'll put rat? it as a post so it uh, on the YouTube page. How about that? What is chat uh, rat? Uh, that's what we call the people in the chat. They're not oh, good at awesome. words. That's awesome. Hey, hey, uh, hey, why, Darius, why don't I answer instead of you yelling offset? Because I have a mic. Yeah, and you I don't. know. Why Darius um, just speaks so, like we can hear him. So, yes, the, the chat rats is what we call the people in the chat. They're not good at words, but they're e really good at putting the rat emoji. So it takes the pressure <laughs> off them. And they're good at chewing wires, and they're good at causing a lot of problems, just like rats. I love it. Hi. You know what eats the rats? Cats. This is exactly how Hitler started. This yeah, is exactly how Hitler started. it is similar. Started Some of the youth <laughs> stuff we are kind You've of... You've put the rats in the chat. You should put... In... I mean, the Hitler youth, they were powerful for their age. They were. They were successful. They they were. Okay, age. one more super what? chat. Bad Buddha says smash the like button. $20. All right, thank you for that. And guys, everybody hit that like button. There's 1,100 of you watching. We need 1,100 likes. All right, guys, we end the show the same way every time with our freestyle finale. DJ, hit that beat. Come here. White Darius, on your knees. If you say crap, you better say please. On your knees, get on your knees. <laughs> get on your knees. Global Jihad, and you're dead. Gonna shoot you right in the head. I don't care if you beg for mercy. I'm hanging out with a black man named Percy. Gonna bury your body in the ground. I don't care if your skin is brown. You're gonna die every way. You're gonna die because you're super gay. All right, we love you guys. We love everybody. We hate Hamas. Big Nasty loves you. He's black. He's not Jewish, so don't kill him, all right, guys? <laughs> you're probably gonna kill me because my last name's Stein, but hey, bring it on. Shut up! This is our show. Good night. <laughs>